Hi guys, welcome to Commercial Law Tutorials. Law of Purchase and Sale. Under the topic Law of Purchase and Sale, we have already covered the definition and the essentials, then duties of the buyer and those of the seller. Today we are moving on to lesson number three on latent and patent defects. This is one of the duties required from the seller to warrant or guarantee the buyer that the mix is free from any latent defect. We are going to discuss and learn more concerning these defects that are found on products sold. In this lesson, first of all, we are going to define what a defect is. Then we'll move on to a Latin defect. The exceptions for Latin defects and the requirements and remedies available for the claim of a Latin defect. Next, what are patent defects? And at the end of the lesson, I'm going to give you popular exam questions relating to this lesson. What is a defect? A defect is an imperfection in a product that causes the product to be less acceptable or not useful at all. The defect can be either visible such that everyone can see it at the time of sale. Those are patent defects. Or it can be invisible or hidden such that the defect will surface after the sale. It can be seen during the sale. Those are latent defects. More on latent defects. A latent defect is a hidden flaw in the article sold, which is not readily apparent at the time of sale. On a reasonable inspection, latent defects are usually likely to be overlooked and never seen by the buyer. The warrant against latent defects is implied in all contract of sale without express agreement between the parties. Thus, the seller is required by law to warrant the buyer that the product is free from latent defects. So the general rule is that it is an implied duty of the seller to guarantee the mix being sold to be free from latent defects. Examples of latent defects are leaks in the ceiling or roof, plumbing issues, Test infestation or food electrical wiring hiding behind walls. Defect to the clutch in the lawnmower. Those are our examples. So, the under Latin defects, the buyer is required to prove the following that the defect was Latin. The defect should be Latin, not patent. As we have said, a patent defect is one which is open for all to see, should be able to be identified by a reasonable person on inspection of the mix during the sale. So the buyer is required to show that he could not have seen the defect under reasonable inspection of the mix at the time of sale. For instance, in this case, God Blood discovered that the car he bought from Sweeney had a Ford crankshaft which had been welded to the car by the seller. It was held that the welded crankshaft was a Latin defect as one could not see it on a reasonable inspection before buying the mix. The 
that the defect was present at the time of sale. The defect should be present at the time of sale, as shown in this case. South Africa Oil Company bought oil from another company for soap making, but the oil gave unsatisfactory results. The soap was not good. After testing it, it was discovered that the oil had well and sperm oil that had been mixed. So it was held that this was a latent defect that was available at the time of sale and reduction in purchase price was granted by the court. Then it should be proved also that the defect destroyed or impaired the usefulness of the mix. The mix should no longer be suitable for the purpose for which it was bought for. Thus, the purpose for which things of that kind are ordinarily used for, it should no longer be suitable for that. For instance, in this case, Robert's Construction bought special kind of bricks for certain walls from Homed Brickworks. After construction, the bricks from Homed started to crumble and decompose, threatening stability of the wall building. So the walls with those bed bricks were torn down by robbers. Then he then sued home deeds. It was held that the bricks contained a latent defect. Let us now look at the remedies available in case of a latent defect. We have Axial Red Pitoria, Axial Quant Minoris, Axial XM Shio. First, Axial Quant Minoris. This is the reduction in the purchase price proportionate to the defects discovered where the defect is not major, that is, not material. But nevertheless, it has reduced the value of the thing sold. That is, the minor defect has otherwise reduced the value of the thing sold. So, there will be reduction in the purchase price. Because the buyer would have proved that he had paid for the certain value of the mix, for which the value of that mix had been reduced by the defect in the mix, hence the purchase price has also to be reduced. So the buyer keeps the thing or the mix in this remedy, but the purchase price is reduced. Axial Red Victoria. This is where the defect is material or major. The buyer then sets aside the contract and does not claim any damages. The buyer retains the mix and he or she is given back the patient's price. For instance, in this case, Lawton bought eggs from Max which were destroyed by the local authority as they were unfit for human consumption. Lawton was granted Axiorib Dipitoria, that is, he was given his money back, although he couldn't give back the eggs as they were destroyed by the local authority. The destruction of the eggs was out of his control. Let us look at the situations where the buyer cannot claim rescission under Axio Redibitoria, but is restricted to Axio Quant Minoris only. Where the mix has been destroyed or damaged after delivery due to the buyer's negligence. If the purchaser had used the mix such that he is unable to retain it in the condition it was when delivered, he cannot restore status quo. So, he cannot claim rescission under Axial Redipitoria. 
If the purchase I had sold the max after discovering the defect, such sales amount to waiver of his rights. He cannot claim actual red Victoria again. Or if buyer discovered the defect and failed to report and retain the max in time, such that length of time that is tacit acceptance of it is interfered. Buyer should normally inform seller about the defect on time, that is reasonable time period. Exio SM2 It is the cancellation of contract and repayment of the purchase price against return of the thing sold with or without any additional claim for damages. Damages are usually claimed in this situation for the breach of contract. It is given in outstanding situations though, that is only in exceptional cases. It is usually granted or it is available in these situations. Where the buyer is defrauded, he entered into a contract as a result of false representation by a seller who publicly professed to have skills and knowledge in products he sells. That is when it is given. Or where there is an express warranty, that is, people agree in the contract to use actual as I'm sure, as a remedy in case of latent defect, that is also when it is given. Let us look at this case. Where Odenthal bought stock feed bone meal from Bethlehem, who was a dealer specifically in stock feed. The bone meal unknown to both of them, that is the seller and the buyer, had anthrax gems. Odendao, 13 cows, died after eating this bone meal. Odendao then sued. Odendao got full compensation in this case. Let us look at the exceptions where the seller is not required to guarantee the buyer that the mix is free from any latent defects, where the buyer has got no remedies if he finds latent defects in the products he had just bought. First, we have soft food tooth. That is, sold as it is. This means articles are sold as they stand or with all the faults. Therefore, the goods are sold while free from implied and express warranties. That is under self-stood. We have this case where an auctioner sold some pigs by public auction under footstools. The plaintiff had not heard that sale was under footstools. The pigs had latent defects. It was held that a public auction is under footstools, so plaintiff had no remedy in this case. I have got more cases for you, which are under footstools. The other case or situation is if the defect does not exist at the time of sale but came up after the sale, the buyer should prove that the defect existed at the time of sale, not after the sale, for there to be a warrant against latent defect by the seller. Otherwise, there will be no remedy for the buyer if he doesn't prove that the defect existed at the time of the sale. And also, where the buyer is aware of the defect at the time of sale or becomes aware after the sale and expressly or impliedly accepts the position, he is taken to have wavered his rights 
against the seller in respect to that defect. So he can't claim for any remedy under Latin defects if he is aware of the defect. This is not also possible in the sales which are under judicial authority or by a trustee in an insolvent estate. The things or makes are sold as they are. And also, if the defect is patent, one has no remedy. And lastly, if the sale is subject to a suspensive condition and the condition has not yet been fulfilled, there is no remedy for the buyer. Patent defect. What is a patent defect? This refers to any defect that can be seen upon a reasonable inspection by any person during a sale. Patent defects are open for all to see and can be readily detected at the time of sale. So on a reasonable inspection or examination, patent defects should be obviously noticed by the buyer. The seller is protected by the maxim caveat sure. Let the buyer be aware. Here are some examples of patent defects. Broken windows, wall cracks, missing or broken tiles, broken light switches, broken or rotten cupboards, cracking paintwork, burn marks on carpets and bent walls. These are patent defects. Certain defects are not guaranteed by the seller since they are easily seen by the parties and negotiations are done before the parties enter into the contract of sale. Thus, the general rule is that one cannot cancel the contract when he or she discovers a patent defect after the sale. Buyer should inspect the mix before buying. As the room caveat am sure, let the buyer be aware, applies. Let us now look at the questions. Explain fully the warrant against latent defects and the remedies available. Analyze remedies available to a buyer who has bought defective goods. What are the remedies available to a buyer to whom defective goods have been sold and delivered. Is a seller generally responsible for any defects found on a product after the sale? Discuss. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe.